cute. Hi guys, it's Jackie again back at the Buffalo Zoo. Today we are gonna be learning about some new animals because I got super excited seeing that someone was interested in learning all about frogs and toads. Amphibians are some of my favorite types of animals to work with and to teach about, so I jumped right on that topic and I just had to have my say about these really extraordinary animals. So like many other types of amphibians, frogs and toads are so special because they have to go through metamorphosis as part of their life cycle. That means that they lay their eggs usually in water or near water. The eggs hatch as tadpoles or larvae. They have to go through a really crazy change in order to become an adult and lots of their body parts grow and develop over time. So one of the things that I wanted to focus on today with our frogs and toads is just a simple comparison between these two types of animals. Here in the United States, we have so many different types of frogs and toads. So what I want you guys to do is to challenge yourselves and learn a little bit more about some of the frogs and toads that you might have right in your own backyard. That's one of the things I'm gonna get to a little bit later on. So I wanted to introduce you guys to our two animal friends today. We have Anita, the Puerto Rican crested toad right here. She is an animal that is native to the island of Puerto Rico. Being a toad, she has dry, warty, bumpy skin, and she is able to uh, spend a little bit more time in a slightly drier type of place. You'll notice that her colors are dark brown and black, and that would help her to camouflage down on the floor uh, where she would want to be hanging out and spending her time. Now, we have a really special breeding program here at the Buffalo Zoo for Puerto Rican crested toads. What our zookeepers are so diligent in doing and contributing for this species is to breed these toads right here at our facility. And then we're able to release those tadpoles back to their native Puerto Rico to help with their repopulation efforts down there. So we talked a little bit about a toad right there. Next, we're gonna take a peek at our uh, Amazon milk frog, Rio. So these animals are gonna look a lot different than that toad that we just saw. You're gonna notice that I'm switching out my gloves here because one of the characteristics of amphibians is that they have semi-permeable skin, which means that they can breathe through their skin, water can pass back and forth through their skin. So I just wanna make sure that I'm not getting getting any of my germs or any of Anita's germs uh, back and forth between these two animals. I want to make sure that everybody stays healthy, just like you guys are all staying healthy, I'm sure, uh, with uh, all the quarantining that we're doing and keeping our distance from one another. It's very warm in our amphibian and reptile center, which is where we're coming to you from today. So my hands are a little sticky. It's just getting me a second to get those gloves on. So this is Rio. And Rio, as I mentioned, is an Amazon milk frog. So they would be found in the Amazon rainforest and their colors act more as a warning, whereas Anita's colors help her to camouflage and blend in. Uh, Rio's colors would help to tell predators that he is potentially poisonous and you don't want to eat him. Milk frogs get their name because they can produce a slimy, milky white substance on their skin that tastes bad to other animals. So it helps to protect him and keep him safe. Now, this is a type of tree frog. You'll notice right here that you can see his little toe pads on his foot. And those little toe pads can stick to just about anything that he would want to climb. Underneath those little toe pads, he has very specialized skin cells that would help him to grip on to just about any surface, including the plexiglass of his critter keeper right here. I'm gonna set him back down, there we go, so you can see how he kind of moves around and hops around in his enclosure. Of course, as soon as I say that, he stops, which is okay, it's his prerogative, he could do what he wants. 
But one of the cool things about frogs, and one of the ways we can tell them apart, is by how their skin looks moist and shiny, uh, which is one of the ways that you can tell the difference between frogs and toads. Now, you're hearing one of our interactives that we have here in our amphibian and reptile center, listening to the sounds that that frog was making. And a long, 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 long time ago, when animals were evolving, Frogs were the first animals that were able to produce sounds using their vocal sacs. So what I wanted to introduce to you guys was some of the sounds that we have from frogs right here in western New York. I have this really cool high-tech device called an identifier. And with this, I can listen to different calls from different frogs and even birds that we have around here if I put that card in. So we're just going to pick my favorite, which happens to be our gray tree frog. So let's see if we can hear that one. Oops, it would help if I turned it on, right? There we go. So for each of these frogs, they all have their very own unique call, which is something that I think a lot of people forget. Just like we all have our own individual voices, these frogs all have their individual voices. So male frogs, that one's my favorite too. So male frogs would make these advertisement calls to try to encourage the females to come closer so that they could find a nice little breeding pool where the females will be able to lay their eggs. Now, I have a really cool activity for you guys to do at home if you would like. You can kind of make your own frog eggs and get a chance to see how they're usually really moist and wet and squishy. Many of you guys might already have these at home. So these are Orbeez or water beads. I use these clear ones for uh, teaching because they look really similar to what undeveloped frog and toad eggs would look like. They feel really cool and wet to the top. Much, but this is just like what a frog and toad's eggs would be like if you were to come across them out in the wild. Frog eggs are typically laid in jelly-like clumps, whereas a toad's eggs would be laid in long, wavy strands, but still just very wet and moist and usually in some sort of water feature. Now the last thing that I wanted to introduce to you guys today is a little bit of homework and some sort of fun activity that you guys can do as well. You can create a nice little Venn diagram here, just like I have, showing the difference and similarities between frogs and toads. We talked a little bit about how frogs have wet, moist, and slimy skin, whereas toads tend to have a little bit drier, wartier type of skin. So you would put your characteristics for frogs on one side and toads on the other. And then this middle part where they overlap would be where you talk about some of the ways that they are similar. They're both amphibians. They both go through metamorphosis, and I'm sure you can find some other ways that they might be similar as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed getting a chance to learn about some of our frogs and toads that we have here at the Buffalo Zoo. And be sure to keep your ears perked up in your backyards for some of our local frog and toad species, and maybe try to figure out a little bit more about those and what you have right in your own backyard. Thanks, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.